Hello and welcome to the next Granny Square in our series of Talking Grannies and our a Granny a Day really. We're doing one every day this week. Um, so this is the third one and it, we've named it the Wharfdale Square. Um, you will have seen this before if you're into Granny Squares because it's actually a Target Square. Um, there are lots of slightly different patterns for Target Square and this is the one that, that I prefer that I find quite, I find makes a nice, neat, solid square that you can join together. Um, I've done some in just one colour and I've done some with um, the four different colours like we've been doing in this series of granny squares. So the pattern is really quite simple. Um, we're going to use the same stitches that we've used for um, the classic granny and for the, the Wensleydale square. So the Wharfdale square starts with exactly the same in the middle. It looks a little bit different to the granny square in the middle um, because of how we work into the stitches and not just in the spaces between. So I'll show you how that works. So today we're going to start with the with the pale blue. And we're going to start in exactly the same way as we have done for our other two granny squares. So we start with a slip knot and chain four to make a little circle. And then we join into the first chain to make a circle like that. OK, and we're going to work into the middle of the square as we have done before. So to start with, we've done that and then we do chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then work three trebles into that circle. Oops, oh, I didn't do that quite right. One, two, the first bit's always the fiddliest bit because you've got a tiny little bit to hold on to between your finger and thumb. We've got three trebles, two chain, three trebles, two chain. Three trebles, two chain, three trebles, join into that space and pull through. Okay. So that, pull the middle to pull it tight, is exactly the same as we did for the classic granny square the first time. This is where it changes. OK, so where it's different um, to the granny square, instead of just working in our chain spaces, we're actually going to work into the top of the stitches. Each of the trebles has got, you can see it's got like a little chain at the top of it. And that's where we're going to work. We're going to work underneath. So work underneath both of, the, of those pieces of yarn. So it's like a chain. So you've got one, two, three. OK, so we're going to start by joining our yarn with a slip knot, as before, into any of the corner spaces. And because we have a few more stitches in the corner, we're actually going to chain six. OK, so we join it with a slip knot and then we'll chain six one two three four five six i'm going to do two trebles into that same corner space so one two okay and then we're going to do a treble into the top of each of the trebles from the first round but into the actual stitch so underneath underneath that stitch there the top of it so that's one into there two three listen to the wind howling okay then we're going to do two trebles into the chain space in this corner And because we've got more stitches, we're going to do three chains between our trebles in the corner. So we do two more trebles into that corner. Then we're going to work a treble into each of the 
top some stitches from the treble before. So that's one, two, three. And two stitches, two more trebles, sorry, into this corner. Separated by three chains. One, two, three. Crochet is a lot of counting, but not to big numbers. So, and then on the top of each, a one, two, three, and two into the corner. Just hold that tail out of the way. One, two, separated by three chains. One, two, one, two, that end's just getting in the way, look, of a bit of, of the wool that I haven't even used yet. How cheeky is that? I'll pull it out in a minute, doesn't matter. Join into my corner. Okay, quite cute, isn't it? So the next round, you might be starting to see a bit of a pattern in the patterns where actually each side of the square does just repeat the pattern. Okay, so this round, we're going to join into any corner. We'll go with the oatmeal next, as it seemed to want to join in just then anyway. Okay, so Join it in with a slip knot and then we chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two trebles into that same corner space. And then we're going to work trebles into the top of the stitches from the previous round. So we haven't just got three here now, look, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're going to do seven stitches across, but this time exactly the same as before, into the top of the stitch. It's underneath that, that chain top, it looks like a chain. Make sure you get into every single one. All the way across. And then in the corner, the same as we did on the previous round. So we do two trebles, three chains, two trebles, two trebles, one, two, three chain, two trebles. Okay, into the top of the stitches going across. I think I like these colours, it reminds me of the fields, the green fields and the, the blue sky, the, the pale blue of the early morning and the wintry blue skies that we've had at the moment and then the dark blue oh that's that's the color of that blue just before just before the sun goes down and the sky if, if there aren't any clouds it turns the most incredible blue kind of inky blue that you just want to swim into it's like the end of the day and the promise of a new day coming Okay, so working across, it's an end going to get in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull that round and hold it out of the way so it doesn't get involved. And we'll sew them in at the end. So if you haven't watched the, the granny squares and you want to know how I sew my ends in, um, the, the classic granny, so the video, the first video in, 
in the actual the actual granny square so not not the first one which is the talking squares and, and the crochet chain but the classic granny square that's one where i talk about how i sew in my ends i'm not going to do that every time because um, i do do the same way i've tried lots of different ways just like i've tried lots of different ways with knitting sewing in ends with knitting oh that can be quite a challenge especially if you want both sides to be seen i find that quite tricky Right, okay, we're almost all the way across. So I've gone in the top of oh, gone in the top of every stitch. Need to make sure do you see what I did there? I only went through one of the one of the loops at the top of the stitch, so make sure you go through both of them. One more into the corner and join through that chain space in the corner. Pull through to fasten up. Okay. So it makes quite a solid square as a target square. It can be really, really effective when they're joined together. So joining into any any corner, we're going to do exactly the same. So join in, chain six. Oops. Two trebles into that corner. And the number of stitches you have to do across really does grow because each row you're adding four extra ones in the corner. So this round, look, we're going to have one, two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, nine, still not there, nine, ten, eleven. So we've gone from three to, what did we have? We had three and then we had seven and then we've got 11 so we're adding four every time to the number of stitches that we sew in well not sew crochet into the top of i don't know why i said so so three chains in those corners so you've got room and you could if you wanted to if you wanted to keep going with this you could just make it bigger and bigger and bigger because you're repeating the same pattern each row or each round so if you wanted to have a a granny square that was five rounds or six rounds or seven or I've made some blankets that are just like a giant granny square and they get bigger and bigger you can just keep going because the pattern literally repeats itself you just need to remember to go into the top of all the stitches across I think it would make a really lovely giant blanket actually a giant um, target square I haven't thought of doing that mm. adds to list of projects that she'd like to do I've got a very long list of things that I'd like to do. Trouble is, the more you make, the more you think, oh, I could just do that, and oh, and that, and oh, and what about that? I've got piles of projects. So we're going, going around. So this, th this kind of target square does use quite a lot of yarn in each each round because as you can see there, there aren't because there aren't the chain spaces between only in the corners you are working into every stitch so it will make a denser blanket or scarf or whatever it is you, you're going to make your granny square into all the way across you can see how it's taken longer than it has done to do the other squares because there are just so many more stitches and it looks really so different but we've literally in our three granny squares that we've done so far we've just used the same three stitches and made quite different squares amazing what you can do with crochet and it really is just you know how many times you wrap you wrap the yarn around that hook but we've just been doing trebles 
and chains and the slip stitch, the important slip stitch. So almost all the way across in every single stitch. Going out with the night sky on this one. There we go, all the way across and then the last one into the corner. Join into that first chain space. And there you go, a target granny square that we have named Wharfdale after one of our favourite, one of our favourite dales. So there you go, you've got a lovely target square, you just need to sew in your ends. As always, if you've enjoyed making um, a Wharfdale square, please do share, share, share pictures on our sh social media so we can see what everybody's making. I'd love to see how you're getting on. Thank you for joining. Bye.